Hi guys, how are y'all doing? Hey, um, we are gonna read chapter two of A Dog Called Kitty. So if you don't have your book um, right next to you, go ahead and hit pause on this and then run and go grab your book and turn to chapter two. And we're gonna get started, okay? So we are here at chapter two. Chapter two, mama let me off in the front of the high school football stadium. That's where the boys from my school were playing football this morning. Brad McNeil, my best friend, had told me about the hole in the fence at the west side of the stadium. He said that nobody came around to check on Saturdays and it was probably all right for us to play. I didn't tell mama that, but I said that Brad told me everyone played there and that it was all right. I really didn't lie to her. I just forgot to tell her we were sneaking under the fence to get in. Are you sure anyone's here? She asked. I started to get it as I started to get out. I don't see any of the gates open. I nodded, remembering the bicycles parked beside the stadium as we drove up. They're here, I answered. I figured one of the gates on the other side is open. Mama kind of raised her eyebrow. I suppose it's all right, she said with a shrug. I'll be back after I do some shopping. Take about two hours or so. That'll be fine, I answered, closing the door. Just honk the horn, I'll be listening. I walked toward the front of the stadium real slow until Mama turned the corner at the end of the street. Then I took off around the other side where I'd seen the bicycles parked. Sure enough, Brad had told me right. There, by the fifth evergreen bush, was a little dirt path. I got down on my knees and followed it through the bushes and just beyond was a hole in the stadium fence he had told me about. The guys were down at the other end of the field beyond the water sprinklers. I shot through the spray just as they swung apart and joined Brad without getting a drop on me. Charlie Jinks and Brad Parlin started clapping and yelling when Brad and I marched down the field, only I figured they weren't all excited about me being on their team. It was just that Sammy, Darling, Sammy Darlinger had one more guy on his side than Brad did, and they were glad I was there so the teams would be even. Charlie and Ben slapped me on the back as we huddled up. Brad called the play. All he said was, run for the goal line when you get open and I'll hit you. Charlie snapped the ball and we took off. Sammy Darlinger was covering me, only... When he figured out it was a pass play, he left off and went toward Ben. Guess we figured there was no way I could catch the ball, and Ben was pretty good at it. Right then, Ben spotted me open. When I saw him draw back, I was kind of wishing he wouldn't throw it at me, because I'd probably drop it. That would be me, too. I would not be very good at football. Just like I was afraid of, when Brad saw me behind the goal line, he threw it right at me. I guess he was excited because he threw it harder than usual. The thing smacked me right in the stomach. When it did, I slapped my arm shut around it. The nose of that pointed little ball sure hurt. I closed, excuse me, I closed my eyes when it hit. But when I opened my eyes, danged if that ball was sitting there in my arms. It must have surprised Brad more than it did me. He flung his arm straight up over his head. Touchdown, he yelled. Then he started jumping up and down, dancing around all over the place. I started back towards him to tell him, that a gr tell him what a great pass it was when somebody slammed into me from behind. I wasn't expecting it because I figured the play was already over. Whoever it was hit me with his head square in the back hit so hard that the ball went flying out of my hands and I pitched forward landing on the ground and getting a mouth full of dirt. The tackle knocked the air out of me for a second. When I finally got up Sammy Darlinger, Darlinger had the football. No touchdown! <laughs> he laughed. Ricky fumbled the ball and we recovered. I got up and dusted myself off. Brad came walking over to help me. That's cheating, Sammy. 
The play was already over. You tackled Ricky after he caught the ball and was walking back. Did not, Sammy sneered. If he, could, if he can't hang on to it when he gets tackled, it's a fumble. No touchdown. Is too, then and Charlie came running over. We saw it, Sammy. The play was over. You didn't get close to Ricky until he done caught the ball and started walking out of the end zone. Touchdown counts. Larry Allen and Paul Sparks, two of the guys on Sammy's team, came walking up. That's right, Larry said. You tackled him too late, Sammy. They got, the they got a touchdown. Now, come on. We were walking back toward the field when all of a sudden, I felt somebody's hands on my back. I started to turn around when he pushed real hard. It caught me off balance, and before I could stop, I was heading straight for the sprinklers. The grass was wet and slippery. The first thing I knew, first thing I knew, I was tumbling head over heels into the water. I could feel myself slipping and sliding, only there wasn't anything I could do. Finally, my shoulder bumped against one of the pipes and I stopped. Quick as I could, I scrambled to my feet and ran out from under the spray. Only it didn't do any good. I was soaked. My tennis shoes made a sloshing sound when I walked and I was so slopping wet that I could feel my underpants sticking to me. Sammy was laughing his head off. That made me mad. I walked up to him and shook some water off my head. What you go and do that for? He just laughed and sneered at me. I felt like it, that's why. You wanna do something about it? Sammy does not sound like a friend Miss Stevens wants to have, I'll tell you that. Brad came trotting back to where we were. Man, Ricky, he gasped. Your mom's gonna skin you alive when she sees this. I looked down and saw the mud. It was all over one side, clean from my shoulder to my shoes. It was gooey and black and sticky. Brad tried to clean off some of it, only the more we rubbed at it, the more it spread. Sammy just kept on laughing. It's not funny, I said, finally. These are the best pair of blue jeans I got, and my mom is going to kill me when she sees this sweatshirt. I was trying to get him to stop laughing, only he just laughed harder when I said that. Then he got that squinty-eyed look on his face. You want to do something about it? He growled. Leave, me al leave him alone, Brad snapped. Get lost, Sammy sneered at him. He clenched his fist at his side. Move toward me. Well, Ricky, you gonna fight me about it? I looked at him. I was the one who ought to be mad, not Sammy. But he just kept moving closer, glaring at me with his tight eyes, like they were gonna cut clean through me. I didn't know what to do. I knew I'd be in enough trouble at home for getting wet and muddy if I got if I got to fighting, Mama would switch me for sure. Then again, all the guys were watching. I couldn't just turn tail and run from Sammy either. He walked right up in front of me and shoved me with one hand. You gonna fight me? I didn't answer. Sammy pushed again. What's wrong, chicken? Quit, Sammy. Make me, he sneered. Then he pushed again. Sammy, I mean it. Let's just forget it. Let's go play. Sounds like one of us is making a good choice and the other one is not, right? I tried to turn away from him, only Sammy grabbed my arm and spun me around. Then he socked me on the shoulder. It was right then that something snapped inside of me. My head wasn't working very well, I guess, because I don't remember too much of what happened. There at first. I do remember thinking, I don't care if dad bust a paddle in half over my seat. I'm not gonna take no more off Sammy. It took me half a second to, te te it took me half a second to tear into him with everything I had. I must have gone out of my head. I don't remember what happened. Only I started swinging and hitting and wrestling Sammy all over the place. When my fit finally came back, we were both under the water sprinklers. 
I was sitting on top of Sammy with both knees pinning his shoulders down. And I was pounding him in the face with my fist so as hard as I could hit. Then I noticed he was so beat to a pulp when he was so beat to a pulp, he was hardly fighting back. He was laying there on his back crying, yelling at me, don't hit me no more, don't hit me. I had my fist drawn back, ready to sock him again when I caught my, hold of myself. All of a sudden I heard it, eyes wide, I looked around. Sammy Doberman was there beside us. He was, Sammy's Doberman was there beside us. He was barking and bouncing around trying to find out what his master was yelling about. Like a bolt of lightning, the old fear took hold of me. Before I knew what was happening, I was in a panic, on my feet, running, running as hard as I could. Behind me, I heard Sammy yelling, get him, butch, sick him, boy, tear his leg off. The dog was barking right at my heels. Remember in chapter one where he got scared of the little puppy? This is making me think again about how um, that scar must have been from a dog. That's why he's really scared of the puppies and the dogs. I knew I was going, I knew it was going to happen again, just like it had before. I could almost feel his sharp teeth closing on my leg. I knew if he bit me, I'd fall. I'd be there on the ground, helpless. I'd be laying there, and that dog would be tearing me to shreds. Bum, bum, bum. Okay, we are going to stop here, and then we will be back tomorrow for Chapter 3. See y'all later. Bye-bye.